Hi everyone, my name is Rachel Bibb and I'm a key assistant animator at Walt Disney Animation Studios. Another name for what I do is cleanup artist or final line animator. Um, I've been at Disney for almost 24 years now. I started on Lion King and uh, worked on Mulan and Lilo and Stitch and Brother Bear, uh, Princess and the Frog, Winnie the Pooh, wreck it off to Moana. Um, but today uh, we're going to draw one of my favorite characters, uh, Tiana. I had a wonderful time working on her. I love drawing her and uh, hopefully you can draw along with me and fall in love with her too. I hope you do. Okay, so to start, draw really really lightly with a, a like a red pencil or a, a lighter graphite or some people use blue it's really more personal preference kind of like get a nice little oval for the head I imagine her neck coming down here her shoulders are going to be here Another oval for her rib cage. Just really lightly, barely making any marks at all, but just kind of just sketching in to make sure that everything I want to draw will have room enough on the page. And put a little soft eye line in there. Imagine her head is kind of tilted this way. And then once I kind of get really loosely sketched in there, just to make sure she's gonna fit, I'll start um, actually drawing the features. Let me start out with just getting the uh, outline of her face. left in. She's got a little bit of a straight here on her chin and sweeping back up. Uh, this eye line that I draw, of course her eyes will actually sit on that. Her nose will sit really close to it actually. She doesn't have a very long bridge. And then we'll get a little hint of where her mouth will be. That's just so that you don't get too far. I say I draw the jawline and then I realize, oh, her mouth is gonna to be too close or too far away from it. Uh, right on this eye line uh, will be her ear. If you draw a line of kind of uh, across from the top of her mouth, sometimes the base of the nose, depending on how long your nose is, uh, that's where the bottom of the ear will sit, and then the neck attaching into that. So she's got this uh, nice round forehead uh, with her hair pulled back the way it is, and then this little sideburn right here, and then the back of her head sweeps around to continue the hairline. And then we have uh, got our center line here coming up over her hair. Then it kind of pulls back and we have her tiara that then embeds itself in her hair. And then the three tines coming off of the center of that tiara. And then her bun, which is kind of a little bean shape. So I'll just keep kind of bouncing around, making sure all my proportions are good making sure everything is going to fit. Her eyes are like about one eye ap apart. So if you measure the one eye, then you go over and the other eye will be 
about one eye distant um, because I'm going to have her smile. Her cheeks are pushing up into her eyes, so I make a little rounded shape for that. Get the little eyelashes in there. She's going to be looking over her right shoulder. More eyelashes. Make sure she's always have both eyes look in the same direction, which is always important. It's very important because uh, she doesn't look like her if her nose gets too far away from her eyes, like too low. And then we'll get her mouth in here. She's got a nice big smile. And sketching the upper lip. The corners of her mouth. And get the teeth in here. Also curving up because of her head tilting. And then I pull her jaw forward just a little bit. nice full bottom lip that we um, will flatten out just a little bit of a straight there at the bottom. Again, we'll get this cheek to be a little bit pushed up since she's smiling so big. A small reverse right there. Straight for her chin. And then up and around the other side. So yeah, I just keep punching in refining the shapes, making sure I'm happy with the way they look. Get the other side of the teeth in there. Uh, if you color in the corners, it's not, it will make it feel like it's going back in space. And give some dimension to the drawing. And continue on down her neck and her necklace. And then the jewel on it, let's see, find her shoulder here. And the glove that she has on. And then the dress bodice goes here. And then her other shoulder coming in and around. So I think I'm starting to be happy with where this is going. Get rid of some of these extra lines. Uh, let's see, she has um, nice thick eyelashes and uh, just a little hint of her eyelid since her eyes are open so brightly. You don't see a whole lot of her eyelid. And her little dimples. Um, and in her hair, because uh, even when she has her hair pulled back like this, we wanted to always uh, still show that she had some curls. Uh, so we always had a little flyaway curl up here on a temple a flyaway curl right here by her ear. And then in the back, her hair comes around the back. We have one flyaway, one big flyaway that has escaped her bun in the back. So 
So once I get happy with that, my sketch, I feel like, okay, I think all my proportions are working. I think I'm gonna be happy with that. I'll actually start uh, drawing in graphite. But first, I take a big kneaded eraser and I just rub it over my drawing. And what that does is it lifts up the top layer and uh, it also makes it easier to draw on top of it. Uh, but it also just knocks that back and lets me um, draw nice and clean. Let me sharpen my pencil. All right. So now I'll just start again fairly lightly laying in the graphite still trying to make sure I'm happy with everything, making little tweaks on my red as I go along. Not pushing too hard just yet, uh, just in case I want to um, erase something and fix it. I won't have embedded the graphite too far into the paper, so that makes a mark if I try to erase it. Still just really gently Bringing in the shapes. Let's focus on her face and get everything the way I want it to be. Tiana was a great character to work on. I had so much fun with her. Um, she was my first princess to be in charge of, uh, which was terrifying and exciting all at the same time. I got to work with Mark Ken, who's always a joy. He's such a talented animator. And give her lots of mascara, a little bit of an eyelid. Get her eye in here. And her pupil. Uh, let's pop over to the other side. Softly lay that one in. Eyelid and eyelash. And tucking it in on that far side also helps uh, turn that corner. Um, gives the drawing some three-dimensionality. And get that pupil in there again, making sure she's looking in the same direction in both eyes. I think this one needs to come up just a little bit. And curve the eyebrow around. She has very manicured, um, actually that needs to come over, very manicured eyebrows. Very expressive. Uh, let's see, her hair sweeping up and around. And then just kind of punching into her hair right here, her tiara. It's funny, her tiara, when we were first designing her, uh, originally had five of these guys. Um, there's a process that we go through uh, on hand-drawn films uh, called uh, line mileage, where we look at a drawing and we see uh, how actually, not only how long uh, it takes to draw, but um, just how much uh, complexity there is in it, which of course, you know, will make you uh, have a shorter amount of time to draw or a longer amount of time to draw, depending on, on what their costume is and 
all the detail that are on them. Uh, so her crown used to have five of these guys. And uh, when you sit down and look at the character, you know, you're, you want to be paying most attention to the face, of course, because that's the most important thing. That's where all your acting is happening. That's what makes a, an audience fall in love with a character. Um, and you don't want to be spending all your time drawing the costume or extra little bits that most people aren't really going to be paying much attention to. So we wound up taking two of the tines off of her. You know, probably saved about five minutes of drawing. And when you're talking millions of drawings, that makes a difference. Let's get her upper lip in here. I love it when the characters have big smiles like this. Keeps them so bright. A little wrinkle up there. Let that stretch over these teeth. On both sides, get a little bit of a line there. This was one of my favorite uh, costumes of hers. Uh, she changed costumes a lot throughout the movie, which actually made her really fun uh, to draw because almost every sequence she was wearing something different. You never got bored drawing the same thing over and over again. Let's get a little curly cue. That'll work. And this one up here. And get her neck. Uh, one of the things about her necklace, uh, it tapers up near the nape of the neck and then gets fatter as it comes down. That's one of the things uh, you always try when you're designing your character to avoid a lot of really harsh parallel lines because uh, it can uh, flatten everything out. So whenever you can add some uh, interest by keeping them from being parallel, we usually do. A little teardrop of their jewel. And then let's get her shoulders in here. A little clavicle. And her glove going up and around. The same thing about the um, parallel lines uh, about the top of her dress. So uh, she has a little stripe right at the neckline here. So we start off thicker around here, then go thin, and then let it get thicker as it starts to curve around the other side. Just makes it a more interesting glove on that side. So now that I have kind of, oh, dimples, need her dimples. Not Tiana without her dimples. Um, now that I've kind of sketched everything in, now I'll go in and uh, just punch up, clean it up a little bit, make some stuff more definite. Uh, one thing that always makes a character drawing come to life is when you're uh, coloring in the pupil if you leave a little highlight it 
just adds that little bit of a sparkle makes almost makes the drawing just come to life and do the same thing on this side let me get her eyelash to be a little more definite One thing, if you're ever, um, especially at this phase when you're really tying it down and starting to draw a little bit darker, if you're ever confronted by thinking that something feels wrong with the drawing, um, especially on human characters, we're so accustomed to judging faces. I mean, we are, we are surrounded by human faces. We look at our own every day in the mirror. Uh, we know when a, when a face doesn't look quite right, even if we might not be able to say exactly what might be wrong. Uh, one really uh, great trick is to flip your drawing over and you can see through the drawing and uh, you can see on the back and suddenly it's just an, it's a new drawing to your brain. Your brain got so used to seeing it in the other way and now when you see it this way, you can immediately look at it and go, oh, you know, I feel like her jaw might be getting a little bit heavy. So maybe I would uh, shave some of that off. And then I would just lightly draw on the back of my drawing, make that tweak, flip it over, and that way I can say, aha, I know exactly what was wrong. She was getting too much jaw on this side. And um, that's an incredibly useful tool. Uh, anytime you're drawing something and you're looking at it and you're like, I feel something isn't right, but I can't put my finger on it. You flip it over and almost immediately you'll see what it is. You'll see the problem. Um, it's one of those uh, weird brain things. I'm not 100% sure. I think it's uh, just because you're looking at it in a new way and your brain can no longer you know, say, well, you drew it this way, so you must want it to be this way. And when you flip it over, your brain goes, aha, I know exactly what's wrong with this. Get her pupil in here, nice and dark. I find that to be uh, so helpful. I still, to this day, use that uh, constantly when I'm doing a drawing and trying to decide <laughs> what's wrong with it. A little bit of a, her little curly cue. Let's shade in her hair here. And all the way around. Shading in her hair up here. And then shading in the corners of her mouth again, just to kind of push them back in space. Helps give a little more dimensionality to it. Little corner here. And uh, just finishing up a couple of little things. Oh, something else uh, that we tend to do is um, use what we call a little bit of thick thin so that if you're um, drawing the bottom of something, just to give it a little bit more of that weight, we'll do a thicker line on the bottom, just kind of instinctually, just to give something a little bit more oomph. The same thing uh, probably on the bottom of her jaw, giving her a little bit more denser line here. It kind of will push her neck back into space but that's kind of a, a natural thing to imagine that a line has a little bit of gravity and that wherever the gravity is pulling on it gets a little bit darker. And I think that's about it. That is my Tiana drawing. Hey guys, I hope you had a great time drawing Tiana. I always do. I hope to see some of your drawings in the future. Bye.